Kopoto Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Firstly, I want to commend uh, the mem member Materia Ture for such an awesome bill, um, long overdue, and uh, thank you for bringing it to the House. Mr Speaker, I wouldn't have thought that twice in one evening I would be speaking about housing and how it impacts the people in my electorate of Christchurch East. In my earlier contribution, I talked about in the last six weeks how 28 people have come to my office. 28 people have come to my office because they are finding it difficult to find bonds and to pay rent. This isn't to an electorate office. And, Mr Speaker, I, my heart goes out to these people because many of them have children and they are scared and they are stressed. And that is the answer to that member's, um, that member's speech that he just made about how, you know, there are rogue tenants and, you know, they do terrible things to houses. There are dozens and dozens of thousands of people out there who are scared that any day they are going to lose the roof over their heads. Now, the Christchurch experience is the cautionary tale that we must all, all listen to because we had the experience of rack renters for years when the insurance money washed into Christchurch for people to rebuild and repair their homes and there was um, money for uh, people to, to go out and rent properties. The, the landlords took advantage of that. There were, there were people who were paying $1,000 a week for a substandard house. When there is an opportunity to make money, unfortunately, there are some people that will do that and they will exploit other people to do it. And this bill attempts to put a stop to that. All it wants to do is bring fairness back into the housing market. Not only did we have the experience of rack renters, not for one year, not for two years, but, two years, but for several years, we have, and we continue to have, the condition of as is, where is homes, where people actually took their money, they left their damaged homes, they rented them out, and they went and bought somewhere nice and dry and warm and... and, and uh, somewhere else, and they left these properties unrepaired or not repaired to a fit standard. We have got thousands of them across Christchurch. We've got many of them in my electorate. People who have not repaired their homes and they are making money, they are exploiting people. Mr Speaker, I'm incensed that, that the National Party can stand there and defend these practices and sure, we've got some great landlords in this country, but I can tell you, Mr Speaker, we have many, many landlords that are just in it to exploit, to make money and to actually cause misery to people. The, the whole idea of letting fees. We've got people that turn over their leases every six months and they charge hundreds of dollars just to, to renew a lease. That's exploitation and it shouldn't happen. And I'm actually really angry about this. I'm really angry. And I just want to challenge Alfred Nuttall and, and his, um, his view and his take about this. Because, Mr Nuttall, I want to say something to you. I have Cook Island people from Auckland getting in touch with me in Christchurch to try and help them find rentals. I have Cook Island people trying to find rentals in Auckland, ringing me in Christchurch. Because they cannot, they cannot afford to find rentals in, in Auckland. They cannot afford to find rentals in Auckland. They are, they are facing eviction. They have uh, huge costs. <coughs> my cost is Mr Naro. My cost is Mr Naro. The Cook Order. Islanders are the lowest the lowest have the lowest home ownership rates of any Pacific Island. The lowest home ownership rates. And that's our people. That's our people, Mr Nuttall, and that's a shame. And you should be ashamed of supporting a government that does not promote home ownership for our people. Because home ownership is the only way that we are going to be able to put down roots and develop a strong community. Not being transient, not being... What have you done for our people? Stand up. Stand up right now, Mr Nuttall, and tell me what you have done for the Cook Island people of this country. You stand Order. up and tell me that, Mr Nuttall, because I know I am, I am 
Excuse me. Mr. Speaker. Call the point of order. David Seymour. Well, Mr. Speaker, if nobody's seeking a point of order, order. Oh, order. someone is. I now have a point of order. I think from. To clarify as to whether or not uh, you took the call from Mr. Seymour because Porter Williams' timer had finished or because of the errant point of order that was called out but not stood order. for? Uh, I did hear someone call point of order, but no one stood to progress a point of order. At that stage, Porter Williams, who was close to her time being completed, resumed her seat, and at that stage, Mr. Seymour sought a call, and I have given the call. A Mr. Point Mr. of order, Seymour. Mr. Speaker. Point of order, Chris Farfoy. My understanding of the situation is that um, Porter Williams was still on her feet, still speaking. A member called point of order and wasn't intending to take a point of order, which caused um, Porter Williams to sit down and interrupting her speech. Now, order. if he's got a genuine point of order, he can stand up and take one, but he used that tactic to try and order. stop her to speak. Order the members now, as I said, I heard point of order called. I looked for whether a point of order was going to be taken by anybody it wasn't. I noted that Porter Williams and the member would not perhaps have seen because Porter Williams is directly behind Mr Farfoy, Mr um, and anyway the time was very close to expiry. I have now called Mr Seymour. And point of order Mr Speaker. Uh, can I just uh, before I address this matter just make sure the member understands I've ruled on this matter. If it's a fresh point of order I'm delighted to hear it <laughs> but if in any way it's an attempt uh, to read. I understand your ruling. My concern is that um, a point of order was called, um, regardless of whether it was at the end of Porter Williams' time, uh, and wasn't a genuine call for a point of order. I accept that a point of order was indicated from someone within the chamber. No one then sought to progress a point of order. As I've already told the member, I think now twice, at that stage, Porter Williams' time had expired. She resumed her seat. Mr Seymour took the call and I have given the call to Mr Seymour. I hope that's clear to Mr Farfoy. David Seymour. Uh, well, thank you, 